Hello, sister. I am so excited that we can finally meet together and spend time. I have to tell you, you know, the rest of the audience, we've been trying to get together since March or April of sure. 23. And the weather is always screaming at us because the first time we tried to get together, it was the earthquakes in Turkey and you're yeah. spending time with your family and like trying to get it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been and always, <laughs> always something. And then this time I'm on the Island of Molokai in Hawaii and we have tornado watches. So I thought that it was only fitting for us to talk outside because you're such an intersexual eco-feminist artist that I wanted the birds to be chirping while we were talking and the leaves clapping through for us throughout. So we'll probably hear some of the wind throughout this too, but you're such an inspiration to me. And I don't know if I've ever told you. Oh, Jody, thank you. Thank you so much. You're I really welcome. When I was curating that show beyond an inconvenient truth and you were an exhibiting artist, I saw your work and was immediately drawn to it with every cell that I have. Stop. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was you, a dream come true to be part of that show. It was amazing. You have had a lot of dream projects. I mean, that was one, but your book that you've, you've illustrated a whole book. Tell us, I want to hear about this climate resistance project and because you illustrated the book right uh it's not the book but so it's this uh online platform it's the website itself okay. and it's also a book oh. so uh yeah in the platform first launched and then she launched a book uh and and the the platform is basically designated for um like infinite ways of being included in the climate movement, what you can do to take action. And what I love about that platform is that it centers the community. Mm. So yeah, it was it was such an exciting project to work with. Um, the owner, Kylie, uh, contacted me in the early uh, January 2023. And it was such a good start for my year because literally everything she talked about, I was like, yes, yes, yes. And yes, we yes. totally need it. And I would absolutely love to be included in the project. I illustrated for the urban cooling, urban farming, mm -hmm. uh, community owned renewable energy and community science. And it was, for me, it was a great project because I get to learn a lot too, while yeah. I'm working on it. That's why I love what I do by working those kind of like, um, climate justice and uh, feminist justice projects, I get to do my own research and I get to learn a lot too. So it's definitely really nice. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the reasons why I start curating different shows and different ad ad avenues within shows. So I can also learn more about the artists and their creative process. But in this project, were there issues that you were illustrating that were really pulling on your heartstrings more uh in this specific one yeah oh uh, i think the community science because so when i when i was looking through her uh solutions and reading yeah. about what she wrote i was like okay urban farming like immediately i can picture the urban gardens the rooftop gardens the community gardens that i already see a lot so it was easier for me to picture. Same with the urban cooling too, like all the, the fountains or shade structures oh. and the renewable energy, again, very um, like tangible in my mind. But when I said community science, I was like, hmm, what comes to my mind when I said community science? And that was why, like, that's when I realized maybe this is the, the area that I don't really know much about. And then I, when I went further into and read more about it, I realized all the apps in my phone that like plant identification, bird identification, these are all inside the community science. It's because when we say like science, it's kind of intimidating. And sometimes like it's not really communicating with us well. Right. But once we, um, once we make it available for the 
for the mass, for the pub- public, we get to know who we're, what we're surrounded with. And then we get to love what we're surrounded with. And we get to, I don't know, want to protect it. So I thought like, that was really fun to uh, learn more about and then illustrate it. That's why uh, when people go and look at the community science one, they can see like there's a girl who's trying to identify a plant. There's someone who's bird watching, someone looking at the telescope, looking at the sky, because all of these things are, uh, even though I didn't realize it's inside the community science. Yeah, yeah. I just saw something on Instagram that hit me in a way that it hadn't hit me before. And it's probably um, something related in in a way, but to stay focused, it was showing children that could identify a hundred different brand names Mm. easy, but they couldn't identify even 10 different plants. Uh, Which is so sad, like literally so sad. Uh, When I like, when I moved here uh, from Turkey, I I mean, unfortunately, back where I'm from, we're not surrounded by those national forests and a lot of parks. But literally right next to my apartment, there is this right park. And when you go and walk, there's little signs on top of the trees, which tells you at what date they were brought here. What is the species? And it's just to me, it was massive because I'm like, wait a second. I can just look at it, know what it is. And then try to identify identify somewhere else when I see the same tree, yes. and it's such a fun thing to uh, to realize. And when I was like reading all those books talking about like you try to get to know your neighbor, but the the bird is your neighbor. The like all of the like squirrels are your neighbor. You ca- you kind of want to know who they are, and once you get to know them, it gets such an interesting place to live. Because now I start like identify uh, start being able to identify some of the birds and honestly Jody it's the best feeling when you look at a bird I'm like I know what it is it's an American robin (laughs) I don't know it's just so fun yeah because it's no longer just a bird it's that bird yeah exactly it's that one yes yes we uh, we have a bird here that'll do that that'll come over and visit that'll visit yeah Yeah. she's red Mm -hmm. oh That's cute. Mm-hmm. I download this one app. It's like a Shazam app for like the birds. You like make the app listen the surrounding and it just like listens the bird sounds and identify which birds are there in your area. And they like when you click on them, they show you different types of photos. It You can listen their callings, different types of songs and what that like what might it means. It's just I don't know. The technology is amazing. <laughs> it's so yes. much easier. <laughs> When it works and it's like for the greater good, it is amazing. That's true. It is yeah. amazing. So actually, let's talk about technology and how you how you work. You're you sometimes draw on a computer. Yeah. Tell I, me like what? Because I saw you using watercolors one day and then you were on the computer. So tell the audience more about your creative process. So I started with um a vacuum tablet, which I was using, like connecting it to my computer. And I was just using the tablet and it was displaying it on my screen. And then I switched to uh, an iPad, which now like enables me to just hands-on draw on a, on a tablet, which to be honest, changed my life, changed my career. Everything is easier because I can download so many different types of brushes, so many different types of textures, and I can travel everywhere I go with just my iPad and access to all the tools. So it was convenient, it's great, but there's it still is not, like it cannot replace the, the feeling of mm. this brush stroke with the, with the paint and the unpredictability of the paint too. And the fact that like I cannot, command Z or like delete the item that I drawn. I just have to like work around it. You know, it's just so it's a more organic process when I do it with like with my hands and manual. Um I I wouldn't necessarily say I prefer one to the other. It kind of depends on how I feel. Sometimes I start sketching manually and then transfer it to my iPad or sometimes I just do the whole process in my iPad. It definitely depends on how I feel. But yeah, I like both. I sometimes integrate them. I do textures on a paper, take pictures of them, send it to my iPad and like mix and 
um, match different techniques that way. So yeah, I like playing around with it. Wow. Yeah, I think I understand much more than what I did before. I just think your creative spirit is so Aww. bright. I mean, the way that your hand just flows in all of your videos, all of your reels on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> do you have like a meditation practice before you draw or like, do you just go for it? Or I, it's just because it's, there's such a flow and Bro, I've been around some artists in my day. You know, I have seen a lot of artists work and there is a certain spark that I see. Like I see it. I Aww. just, you are fully embodied with the creative spirit when you are wor working. Like it's your fingertips. It's just, it, there's a sense of knowing in your hand that I don't see in quite everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So to be honest, painting is a meditative practice for me. And um, like earlier in 2020, I did my yoga teacher training and then I did a meditation teacher training. And then this year I completed the breathwork teacher training. So I incorporate all of these things in my life daily. But when it comes to painting, most of my uh, ideas are already rooted in mindfulness practices. So I try to approach that from that perspective too. Therefore, like um, the movements are mostly, and like I tend to move intentionally with every brush stroke and that just calms my mind a lot and like and now allows me to be present more. So yeah, thank you for saying that. Totally. And I just, I need to pause and just let everybody really hear what you said, because it's so important. That's awesome. Oh, and you are quite a spiritual leader through all your, all your prompts. Like I even gone to your web uh, on your Instagram and been like, what, what's she up to today? What, what should I maybe work on for a minute? <laughs> so what, is what what do I want to say? Let me download this. Hold on. You give people mindfulness practices that is using the creative spirit, like is drawing or yeah. is breathing. Yeah. Mm, to me, like it all started. I mean, uh, painting is a way of expression, but it was more like, what do I want to express? And then it turned the question turned into what do I need in my life? And what I needed in my life was more joy and being more present. So basically everything I tell is what I need to hear. So everything I tell is what I'm telling to myself. And I know that it resonates with everybody. So um, like it started with daily affirmations. And then it started with like, small things that we can look from a different perspective through what I learned from the mindfulness courses or the, the breath work and reflecting it through painting, it became more relatable because art is a, the most relatable form of communication. And um, then it, I don't know, it just communicates what I want to say better. I think it does. It's such a communication tool. And we as a species, as humans, have been drawing since even further back than what we have evidence of, in my mind. Yeah. For sure. And I just love hearing that you said that you went inward because they're in this climate justice. If people were to go inward and be kinder to themselves and figure out what they need, yeah. they'll have so much more empathy for their family, for their neighbor, for someone else that they don't really understand yeah how about understanding people so we don't do this bare you know the barbaricness of a war that is just still yeah. absurdity 100 percent. it's like every day i mean to be honest i was always a very sensitive kid i always tend to like read all the news i always try to be as um up to date as possible and sometimes it's overwhelming and because of the I, the work that I'm doing it, as an activist and an advocate for social justice and climate justice, you get to hear about constant bad things happening in the world. And there, there was a moment that I realized like, oh, 
it all starts within and then goes to like your inner circle, then the community and goes um, broader and broader from there, like a domino effect almost. Yeah. And uh, that's when I'm like, okay, so we need the self-healing to heal the community. And if the communities heal, then those people who rule us <laughs> you know, will change for the better and then make better choices and we all live in harmony. Yes, absolutely. It's such a shift in the patriarchal thinking. Like we can be a community. We can help one another go inward and see the light. Yeah, I, I, and especially when I moved to the United States and actually witnessed how the individualistic culture is so present, so heavily present here, it made me understand so many other things. Like, of course, the consumerism is so high. Of course, the pollution rates are high. People don't care. Like, they're so, um, I don't know, isolated from one yeah. another, yeah. from the nature and yes. from themselves. So. Yes. We don't um, do the actions that is necessary to protect because they don't even know what uh, is there to protect almost. Absolutely. Oh, you're so right. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not aware of the natural world, they don't even know. Yeah. yeah. I had one special, uh, special time. And I just saw your drawing on Instagram with the swans because we're talking about going inward and um, talking about the natural world. I had the swan medicine come in and present herself to me a year, over a year now, almost two. But it is through swan medicine that I think um, helped me go the most inward I have gone. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Do you work with spirit animals or do you think about that when you're drawing some of the animals that I've seen? Uh, not really. I just think that like beauty is uh, is so like associated with nature mm -hmm. and nature. It's like, to be honest, when I was a kid, I was so afraid with of like bugs and certain types of birds. Like I didn't really care for them. You would but never, never, never. I but love it. So beautiful. Like yeah. butterflies are okay. Of course they're beautiful. But yes. like moths are also beautiful. And like the, the beetles are so gorgeous. And then, I mean, swans are obviously gorgeous. They, they're not even like a question. But the pond right next to my uh, apartment in the right park, it's filled with swans and different ducks. Beautiful. It's Beautiful. just like love looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love the way that you draw because I see the beauty in there. In each one, like even the women, you yeah. know, the way you draw their legs. I can't wait to see what other projects you're going to be working on. But yeah, tell us a little bit more about your background. Did you grow up in Turkey or when? Like kind of give us a short chronology of what you've been up to. Yeah, so I grew up in Turkey in the capital Ankara, and I studied communication and design. So my background was actually heavily focused on more cinematography, photography, and the communications rather yeah. than and like. Um, and uh, after I graduate, pandemic happened, so I started drawing more and more, and I started doing more volunteer work than I ever have been because I had so much time in my in my hands. And I started uh, working with WWF and some feminist organizations in Turkey. And the more I learned about it, the more I wanted to uh, be in the movement. And when I looked at what I have as a skill, I just wanted to like, okay, I want to use my skills to this to fight with this. Uh, these issues and advocate for the uh, social justice and climate justice. And then I moved to USA in 2019 and I'm here ever since. I am working with different uh, NGOs, including UN Women, WWF, still working with a lot of uh, different NGOs in Turkey. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm like a creative director in this organization called We Need to Talk, which is uh, aims to tackle period poverty and stigma in Turkey. So yeah, I I illustrate 
I design, I do branding, I do paintings, I do a little bit of everything, but all for the same cause almost. Oh, uh, yes, yes. And just, <laughs> just to clarify, WWF is the World Wildlife Foundation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some heavy hitters you just listed. And yeah. you've had, yeah. And you've been part of some TED Talks with your illustrations. Yeah. The climate, um, they, their uh, climate countdown was like featuring my, my work. That was pretty cool. There is this brand called Seattle Chocolate Factory, which is big here. They wanted me to create a mural for their sustainability journey. Uh, so yeah, I collaborated with a bunch of different brands that are based in Turkey and United States that centers uh, sustainability and their business practices. I, yeah, I'm really happy with, like, I feel like when I spoke it, uh, when I said and decided, like, I'm going to use this for that cause, yes. one by one, all the projects that came to me was through that cause. And then in 2022, um, UN Women wanted me to illustrate the the campaign for the National Women's Day. And I was like, is this really happening? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was great. And then I when when I hear all those positive feedbacks and all those people who come to me and say, like, thank you, like, I really resonated with what you're doing. It just makes me want to do it more and more. And it just motivates me a lot. Well, I'm glad you're motivated because you motivate me. And I know Earth Creative's <laughs> going to want to do some projects with you again here yeah. in the next couple of years and soon. Um you have 12,000 followers on yeah. your Instagram. So do you want to tell everybody where they can come find you to have a collaboration party with you? Do you want people yeah. to go there or your website? Uh, they can um, reach out to me in either platforms. They can find me in Instagram with my name and last name, Burju Kaleli. And me on my uh, website, they can just send me an email or a DM if they want to collaborate and create something together or just want to say hi, I'm open to either way. <laughs> You're so sweet. And yes, you always answer my DMs and I'll make sure that your website and your Instagram will be in the show notes for everybody too. So thank you so much for sharing your magic and your time and your process with us. Oh yeah. You are, you are the future and I'm excited to work on a project with you. I don't know yeah. what it's going to be, but we'll have to make one. No, thank you so much. Thank you.